Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. Season 2 of Star Trek Picard wraps up with a launch and a few hugs and kisses. Files get deleted, a traveler shows up, and some people go back to the future, where the ship doesn't explode at the last second. And there's a first episode of Strange New Worlds, where they visit a planet where warp drive is the bomb. No, I guarantee that you're not a town traveler. No, I'm so. You just fucking turned yourself off. Just because you turned yourself off and there wasn't aware of the time, and when you turned your back itself on, doesn't mean you transported into the future. No, Dot. It doesn't happen. Seriously. If you are unaware of the time, going by it doesn't mean you transported yourself into the future you're not a traveler just just because somebody picks you up and moves you into another room while you're turned off doesn't mean you just traveled through space and time no it does not and i'm gonna smack my hands to make it sound more important thank you because <laughs> that's the way no dot dot no does that mean that when i go to bed and i sleep and i wake up and it's the future that my bed is a time travel device what do you mean logically that makes it no, so? No, your bed's a mortuary. No, it's not. <laughs> what the? Oh, don't try to change the subject by saying the light is... Oh, the light is on. <laughs> All righty then. God dog it. I got to fix this beacon going out ahead of time. Okay, first off, um, before we get started, if you happen to listen to us before the warning, shame on you, because if you're under age 18, get the hell out of the room. You're not supposed to be here. Um, you can be here whenever you turn 18, then collect all our shows and listen to them from the start all the way through. And you can see how we've grown as a podcast, which would be really, really cool. Either that or you could just groan. <laughs> no, that too. <laughs> we do have a lot of groaning, a lot of groaning things. We don't have a guest this week. However, I do have a full compliment for the crew here today. They were amazing. I know. They were, we are amazing. Well, at least most of you are, but I'm not going to say which ones aren't. I'm talking to you, Dot. Yes, I am talking to you. Get out of the room. Um, I have my science officer. Hi, I'm Heather Ferris. I'm the science officer. And Captain, I think we need to get the doctor down here. I gave Rocky a high five, but I think I accidentally hit his member and now he's on the ground. That was that scream I heard. Yeah. And thought, Those were that- screams of joy. <laughs> joy. Oh, my God. Uh, so we need to get the doctor up here immediately. Okay, when he's better, I'm going to have him go to the fabrication department and get another sheath made for that monster of his. It's not supposed to be swinging around like that. Um, (laughs) Speaking of swinging around, I have my number one, our awesome foreign species liaison. Hi, I'm Patrick. I'm the number one, the foreign species liaison, as was said, and also the computer guy. I was thinking about that. Wouldn't we be considered a foreign species for the other species? Well, you're just a weird species. That's all that is. <laughs> well, that's why Patrick's our foreign species liaison. He makes the meetings go good. Well, <laughs> that's true. He's always willing to find an opening. So I think that's pretty <laughs> cool. We have our engineer. I hope he's okay. I'm very comfortable on the floor of Heather's quarters right now. It's very, yeah, I wasn't surprised that the ceiling texture is amazing on a starship. Have you ever stopped to stare at the ceiling of the starship quarters? Uh, 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 Apparently. Because I haven't been high on, on, uh, (coughs) on duty. I I, I got a prelim report from the EMH already. And apparently when Heather high fived it, it spat at her. (laughs) Are you okay? I'm fine. Yeah. Oh, Heather. No, Heather's great, too. Yeah. I, I'm cleaning up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Um, make sure you get to the fabrication after this. That that thing's got to get tamed. <laughs> okay. 
Please remember what we have brought to you by Section 31, as well as our Patreon and listeners that we have on the show. So thank you for joining us. We're quite happy you're here. So thank you once again. A little hesitant this morning or this afternoon, depending on when you listen to it, because I haven't my full coffee yet, as you may or may not have heard, because I think the doc made sure that this preamble was going to go out. We're arguing with him that going to sleep or turning yourself off is not time travel. <sighs> But yet he thinks it is. Uh, First off, before we go ahead and continue, I need to ask my number one, a very important question. Number one. I will not marry you. No, that's not going to happen there. (laughs) Damn, I wanted a wedding. Do we have any corrections (laughs) other than me correcting the fact that no, we're not getting married? Let me check subspace here. Just a moment. Nope. Clear. Captain, can we still have cake? I want cake in the shape of uh, number one. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, if you go into the galley right now, there are four cakes. <laughs> That's all that was said, sir. <laughs> well, maybe Dot has a thing about this time travel. Lame. So speaking about, well, this is never lame. We're going to give you all the information right now that's occurring this week from the north, east, west, and south of the galaxy. So, news. Heather, do you have anything for us? Hi, Captain. So, if you guys are excited about the upcoming series, Strange New Worlds, check it out. Paramount has free new wallpapers for your phone and laptop. So, you can go and get that. Seriously? Yeah. Oh, I love it when they put it out. Yeah. I'm getting mine now. You love it when anyone puts out. Oh, oh hush. Oh. oh, my God. Some of these look like great Zoom backgrounds also. I wonder how they'll look fully expanded on the viewing bridge. <laughs> I love the uh, the Strange New World exhibit we, we were at at the uh, Star Trek convention because mm. they had posters of all the various artwork done for showing you the sets and what the costumes look like. And some of those look like very nice Zoom backgrounds as well. Oh, you yeah. mean when Will Wheaton out and out lied to us? Oh, we'll we'll have to talk about that during the thing. (laughs) He's a liar, liar, pants on fire. So, (laughs) but that thanks, um, Heather. Maybe maybe we should put that in the show notes for some people in case they don't want to go hunting. Hi, Captain. So I think that would be really cool. How about you, number one? What did you get that's not contagious? Well, for season three of Picard, unfortunately, we're losing some of our favorites. So there's a number of actors who are not going to be returning to their roles. Issa Briones will not be returning. Evan Evagor will not be returning. Santiago Cabrera will not be returning. Will Wheaton will not be returning and neither will Orla Brady. And if you don't know who those are, that's Daz, Soji, and Corey, Elnor, Rios, The Traveler, and Laris. And Talon. What about Girardi? I, I, this article doesn't say anything about Girardi, but um, I do believe I read something about her not returning as well. Okay. It's a lot what? of boo. Wait a minute. So he finally gets with Laris yes. and yes. dumps her. <laughs> Spoiler! Well, actually, Laris is going to be She'll make an appearance early in season three, but she's not staying for the whole season. Oh, now where did you get that spoiler? Oh, okay. So she dumps him in the first episode of season three. She's yeah. like, oh my God, she she says a, a Vulcan phrase, wanting is sometimes is better than having. It's not logical, Ooh. but it's often true. Ooh, that's like going to your boyfriend and being like, hey, it's not you, it's me. Yeah. And no wonder she calls him the 10 minute captain. Oh. <laughs> okay, we're going to go on to, well, oh my God, I just amused my own self. <laughs> <laughs> okay stop looking in the mirror are you a 10 minute captain <laughs> no i'm just thinking that's funny because we were younger we used to call people like that lawrence welk because it's like oh one and a two wonderful wonderful <laughs> oh, okay i gotta stop straighten up okay come on i still think that's funny <laughs> oh all right okay <laughs> Oh, uh, real quick, real quick. This is a side note. Oh, that's what I we're talking out, about. Real quick. Just find out Patrick Patrick Kwok Chun from Discovery <laughs> yeah. is having a baby. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, science How has got a really do head. <laughs> <laughs> really? You know. Oh, my God. Can you imagine a hole it comes out of? I don't want to know. Oh, my. I don't want to imagine that. I oh. would C-section for 500, Alex. It's like passing a grapefruit through a garden hose. Oh, God. Oh, <laughs> a really, okay. really small garden hose. Yes. The pain <laughs> is indeed incredible. <laughs> well, Trip knows all about that. Yeah, this is true. 
This is very true. Um, are you off the floor yet that you can give any news? I can there? give you some news. I've got a, a wonderful thing. Somebody tweeted this out earlier this week, and I retweeted it right away because I checked out the article, and I'm just blown away. There's a video that goes with it. The Roddenberry Archive is a thing that is developed by the Gene Roddenberry Estate. It's a multi-decade collection to collect and preserve Roddenberry's legacy at the highest levels of fidelity and historical accuracy. What they're doing right now now, they're using a lot of the people, the veterans from Star Trek, like uh, the Akutas, uh, Doug Drexler, and many others. Their first project is right now to create a one-to-one -one virtual experience of the motion picture USS Enterprise. So virtually, life-size, in virtual world, like every piece of the Enterprise virtually assembled that you can go experience. And they invited many of uh, the, well, the surviving cast and crew of The Cage, including director Bob Butler, and Sandy Gimple, which was a Telosian. And they had uh, Sean Kenny, who played Pike in the Menagerie, and Chris Hunter, the son of Jeffrey Hunter. So these are all people who are involved in this. They talk about it in the video, how awesome this recreation, how accurate it is. And I just nerded out over this. They started to show some of the visuals. You were talking about some really cool Zoom backgrounds. There's some very cool Zoom backgrounds if you have the whole virtual enterprise behind you. Now, that explains why when Heather high-fived you, you were already primed. That thing was already oh. probably up your shirt already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was so, very exciting to learn the story. I have to look at it. Um, Otoy is the site that's involved in the technology of this. Do and, they have uh, anything to, to visually look at yet? Well, you is can, there any VR I would stuff? recommend, I send everybody to trekmovie.com and uh, the articles in there. We'll link to it directly in the show notes. Oh, that'll work. Thank you. That's mm -hmm. actually really kind of cool. Very cool. I like that. For those of you that listen to us overseas, or as they say, over the pond, you've been waiting for Paramount Plus. Well, guess what? In UK and Ireland on June 22nd, with a lot more international rollouts are going to be happening throughout the rest of the year, Paramount Plus is coming. So you guys will be able to sign up to All Paramount Plus face. and get the app. <laughs> God. Well, I, it I depends just, if it's a female so, or not. The, uh, so, so June 22nd, you said? Yeah, June 22nd. And how many episodes of Strange New Worlds will we be done watching by? I know. And by then, I mean, you guys we're, we're going to spoil spoilers. everything for yeah, these poor people across the pond. We're going to spoil all the things. But you'll we'll, be able we'll, to watch. We'll spoil all but two episodes. Yeah, you can watch it on the Paramount Plus app, and it's going to be on Apple, Amazon, Google, Roku, as well as Samsung. And they're going to be putting it on more platforms because more platforms equals more money. So it's going to be six ninety nine pounds, I guess that's the currency, or sixty nine ninety annually in the in the UK. Who were pounded in a sixty nine? What? Mm. <laughs> Also, guess what? It's going to be available in South Korea. So it's, it's coming up. So it's going to be cool. They're going to be having a lot of different stuff. They get some pretty awesome shows on there as well, if you're not just all for Star Trek. Oh, well, there's all kinds of shows. Have you looked yeah. at some of the stuff CBS has been doing yeah. uh, in the Paramount Network? I uh, My sister recommended that I watch 1883. That was really good. With Sam Elliott in there yeah. as a cowboy. And he's, of course, the natural cowboy generally. Mm -hmm. But my goodness, that was amazing. Very much a tearjerker at the end so no spoiler yes, it there was. but uh, it, it, it was it was not one of those things that happened on a happy happy note it, it, it wasn't episode. shiny and happy their last episode no. was a lot sadder than the last episode of star trek picard season two it was also if you are a fan of yellowstone if you want to know the 18 show is and that's a just a preamble. stone that you get from peeing on yeah <laughs> you have like queen latifah who has the equalizer who was renewed not only just for next season but they Three renewed it for two more seasons Love that show so there's a lot there's magnum pi they have all of the ncis's i was really excited to watch uh, sonic the hedgehog the movie because yep. i wanted to see that in theaters but you know covid so i was never able to see that in theaters and then i saw that on paramount and i'm like oh, i must watch that I was it, so was, it was funny. In, in my addiction, I used to get high and play Sonic for hours. Oh, Sonic's the best. It was so much fun. I can believe it because you get all the tinkling noises. June Carey did an excellent job as Dr. Roboto, I thought. It was quite he fun. Did. He did really good. I'm looking forward to Sonic the Hedgehog 2, where he is more like Dr. Robotnik in the video games than he was in the first movie. Are we here to be talking about Star Trek? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I we need to go that. back into that. All right, so... <laughs> We got the news done, so I guess we're going to dive into what you guys really listen to us for, which is not to have private time with Heather and Patrick's and Rocky's voice, but to get our recap. 
So let's get started. Hi, Captain. So this week we watched two episodes. The first episode is Star Trek Picard Season 2, Episode 10, Farewell. It first aired May 5th, 2022. Again, we're going to do the whole episode since we are doing two episodes this week. The gain is at Chateau Picard regrouping when Rios brings up the prophecy. Picard could see the Talon knows something, but instead of talking about it to the group, they transport to Talon's house to pick up some tricorders. Talon tells the crew that she is going to transport to NASA in order to watch out for Renee, and at the last second, Picard hitchhikes a ride. Talon is pissed, and Picard accuses her of going kamikaze. Talon replies, I don't need saving, I never have. The rest of the game transports to Adam Soon's house and finds his fleet of killer drones. They work to disarm it, but they only have three minutes left. Back at NASA, Talon disguises herself as an astronaut and eventually finds Renee. She comes out of the closet as her guardian angel and Renee believes her. Using a sophisticated glamour, Talon makes herself look like Renee and then she runs out of the room and bumps into Adam Soon, who is using Russian tactics to poison the fake Renee. Talon is able to ditch Adam, walk through NASA grounds, and find Picard, all without anyone noticing. Talon finally dies in Picard's arms as she looks up to see Renee's rocket launched into outer space. Adam soon, however, is having a really, really bad day. He just heard the news that Renee is still alive and on her way to Europa. His plan B failed due to Rios' destroying his drones, and then his daughter hacks into his computer system and deletes all of his files. Soon has a temper tantrum and wrecks the place before pulling out a physical folder labeled Project Con. Bum, bum, bum. Meanwhile, as Corey leaves the library, she gets a Matrix-like message with an address and a cryptic message. With nothing better to do, now that she is homeless, Corey <laughs> goes to the meeting and sees Wesley Crusher, the Traveler. He knows she needs some food and a roof over her head, so he offers her a job as a supervisor, which she accepts, leaving for her new life. Picard, however, is back at the chateau, hiding the skeleton key behind a loose brick when Q arrives. Noting that Picard's younger self will find that key in the future causing his mother's death. Q and Picard have a heart-to-heart -heart talk and Picard asks, why me? Q comes out of the closet, another one. He comes out of the closet to Picard and as they hug, Q says, because you matter to me. After their love fest, Picard goes back to the game just in time to say goodbye to Rios, who is staying in the 21st century with Teresa and Ricardo. Picard grabs everyone else and takes them back to Q. At first, Raffi tries to murder their ride home, but then comes to her senses as she does not want to stay in the 21st century. So Q sends them back to their original time, when they have 10 seconds left to live before the ship self-destructs. Hey, thanks Q, you couldn't have sent us back any further? <laughs> Picard cancels the self-destruct sequence, saving everyone in the process, and then lets Dr. Octopus have full control of the ships. Borg Queen Agnes Girardi is grateful because they are seconds away from becoming vaporized by a tri-quantum wave caused by a fissure. Raise the shields! Oh, but there is no Captain Rios. Picard gives Seven a field commission as Starfleet captain. She hails the rest of the ships to raise their shields too. And we see that Elnor is alive. Woo, the crowd goes wild. The Borg and the Starfleet work together to dispel the threat and all is good in the world. Picard, however, needs a drink after that. So he heads to Guinan's bar to reminisce about old times. Guinan tells him that Teresa died of old age and Rios died in a bar fight trying to give medical supplies. His last breath was a cigar puff. The boy Ricardo was able to reverse climate change using what his Aunt Renee found on Europa. Finally, Picard goes home and sees Laris walking out the door. He admits his mistake and asks her to stay with him, and she agrees as they hold hands while the sun sets. 
This episode was chock full of feelings and excitement. Of course, we have to address the first thing where we yelled out in the beginning of the show is that Will Wheaton lied. <laughs> it's got to be funny, though. We, we're not mad at him. During the Chicago convention, he was asked specifically about the traveler role and if he's ever going to be a traveler. And he talked about in his head canon that he's like Star Trek's version of Doctor Who. And he would so love to jump at the chance if they ever asked him. But he says, nevertheless, it's not going on at that time that it happened he already had filmed the part and did everything so he did a really good job of keeping it under wraps will, will was doing a cameo and not those online internet things that they all do to get us to spend money and, and have a little fun time with each actor no he was actually a cameo in the whole freaking show so that was pretty funny yeah and guess what? So he said that he's the Doctor Who of Star Trek. Well, there's another connection to Doctor Who. Leon Noonien Singh, actress Chrissy Chong, was on Doctor Who. Oh, cool. Is that why she feels familiar? Yeah, she was yeah. in the Gamma Forests. Oh, okay. she was a, She was Neat. an officer. Cool. So it's pretty cool. I would really love to see a Doctor Who spinoff with Will Wheaton. It's like Doctor Who. And then they go to like Discovery. They go to Enterprise. They go to Voyager. They go to like all the different series and like have some kind of, you know, like they're saving the world, but nobody knows they're there and nobody knows that they did anything type of Maybe thing. Will and Corey fall in love. Oh, no, he gave it. He gave an interview about that and he stated somebody asked him if he would ever do that because they said the potential for doing that. And his response was now I would have to say typical Will Wheaton is like, I really can't get into what they're going to be doing, but it's it, that would be nice if they do it. And that's kind of exactly what he said before at the convention. It hmm. would be nice if I'm the traveler. So who knows? Maybe that's going to be a, a coming thing. That that must have been so hard for him to uh, get that question at the convention. And his bosses are literally that's, like right behind him. Like, what are you going to say? That's called acting. Yeah. And Will <laughs> is Wheaton that is called a acting? really is good that what actor. That is? Everybody talks about Will Wheaton, but he's actually got acting skills. So that, that was <laughs> yeah, acting. He does. You know, the thing is that I think it's been exciting to watch because it's determined he had acting skills ever since Stand By Me. But or was it? No, he wasn't in the Goonies. Was he in the Goonies? No, or stand he by wasn't the Goonies. in the Goonies. He was in the Stand he was By stand Me. By he me. Was okay, I was right. Me. Okay. Hey, you I, guys. Okay, so. Wrong, wrong <laughs> show. <laughs> So what I was really ex excited about is the fact that he's been everyone's favorite character to hate in, in, in TNG. Everybody always talking about Will Wheaton. When, when you say everybody, you just mean the vocally upset fans. I yeah, don't well, yeah, the 10 percenters. Yeah, the no. 10 percenters. But I've like watched him grown to become a tent post for all things sci-fi. I mean, he gave uh, interview questions on Halo. He's been a Doctor Who's fan and been a mainstay at the Doctor Who convention when it comes to Wilk Winton Con. And to see his popularity grow and his- Popularity? His Thank you. And his nerd credit grow has been really exciting to see. I was, I was, I squealed like a bathtub toy when I saw him yeah. walk in Echo Park. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, we, we need more Will Wheaton. However, mm -hmm. I did have a question. Maybe you guys can answer it. Why does a traveler need to beam out? Like he's a traveler. Be because Why would she, cause she wasn't. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Because <laughs> oh. he was riding with a starship. He was, he was doing yeah. a low style, you know. Yeah, and she wasn't. So <laughs> that's probably why. So Will Wheaton has a whole starship behind him. Is he the captain of the starship? I need more information. I have well, questions. We have well, to find you, out. You won't see him in season three. I know. I'm so <laughs> upset. <laughs> that's that's disturbing to hear the actors won't be back. I'm like, why do they publicly announce that? Why don't they just announce, oh, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. What about the Star Trek? Oh, you know, Star Trek's great. But yeah, but are you going to be in it? Yeah, Star Trek was great. Uh, I mean, just, <laughs> just, just deny any, all these questions of what you're going to be in. You know, I just like, uh, you don't need to tell us you're not going to be there. We want to watch and be surprised surprised that, wait, where was, where was this person? But if you notice with the show, one of the things that I, I saw is that even though Q did this, the way time is funny, like they said, mm -hmm. it had to happen because what Picard thought and what everyone told him that the bullet holes in the wall was from the Germans, but it wasn't. It was from it was their, the Borg. It was their time attacking. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with that key. He knew that he had to go through what he needed to go through. So rather than have his life all over again, he actually put the key back for his younger self to find. That was mind blowing. So there was a lot of little things in there that he had to be aware of. It was interesting getting there. What was mind blowing, though, was was the, the love affair. We finally see Blossom between Q and Picard. I love 
love that. Yeah, that, with, that end scene made me cry. With yeah. Q, with his hands on Picard's face like that, cupped on his yeah. face, and they were so close together. I'm sitting there thinking like, okay, he's definitely going to lean in for the kiss, just like how he kisses Ian <laughs> McKellen. Ian McKellen, you. man. <laughs> I heard you. I heard you. And I didn't know you were watching Picard because I went to go get a snack from the galley and I just hear coming from your room, kiss him! Kiss him! <laughs> yeah. So now I know why. I thought you borrowed one of Patrick's videos. So No, but, but in my was, in my head canon they do kiss. So, so I thought that was well, pretty somebody cool. Somebody kissed in this episode. I thought nobody would mention that. What what about Seven oh, yeah. and Rafi? Wasn't that a kiss? Well, that that's, that's your hot spot. Yeah, that's your hot spot. <laughs> they did kiss a couple of times. <laughs> really? And when and, they and did, was just like Rafi, take a breath. Yeah. <laughs> We're good. Calm down. So enjoy the moment, you know? <laughs> just <Thank> relax. You. <laughs> You know, when they kissed, I was upset because Picard didn't kiss Laris. They, you know, seven and nine and Rafi kissed. But then the major kiss that we really wanted to see between Picard and Laris, they didn't do that. It's like, what the well, fuck? When they kiss, I was going by Rocky's corridor and it sounded like somebody threw water on the wall. So I know what happened <laughs> with him. So that I was, was that surprised was, that when when uh, Picard knelt down with Laris, um, oh, and yeah. not not talking about. Um, I'm sorry, I said Laris. I meant Talon. Yeah. See, I screwed it up already. When he knelt down with Talon on the floor, there she, she's gotten the the roofy palm from Q, or from, not from Q, from God. I'm mixing it all up now. From Soong, she, she got the hand from Soong. She that's the death hand, the death handshake. And, she got a hand job. Yeah, and and mm -hmm. then and then it, she knelt down with. <laughs> Picard and Picard was like touching up on her and stuff. I'm surprised there wasn't any remnants that would have gotten Picard at least a little bit high or something from <laughs> leaning well, he, into he, it. He, you know, he kissed her on the head, so oh. he did there you kiss go. She her. did get a kiss. She kissed her on the head. She didn't give him a hand job though, so that's why he was <laughs> fine. You I know? can't believe that she crawled all through NASA, all through the grounds, you know, from where Renee was all the way to Picard, and nobody fucking noticed a dying woman. It, it, it can happen. Um, <laughs> <laughs> It, 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 you just got to be really, really busy day, you know, when you, you get to have it, nobody's looking in the back room and you get a sheer determination in order to, to make it. One Captain. The, yeah. Did that happen to you? No, oh, not quite. Okay. But one of the things <laughs> it is the 21st century. No one cares about women no. yet. Oh, but, ouch. Ow. Back in, in the day. They don't Damn. care about women. They don't care about LGBTQ. No. They don't care about Black Lives Matter. It's the they, 21st century people. Come and on. they're looking at her. goes, oh, she's probably looking for a contact. But anyway, <laughs> oh, back I had a I had a, a sensei one time that told me during training and he's like if you're fighting an enemy that's determined to bite your ear off he says there's not going to be a whole lot you can do about that they're going to chances are they're going to get to your ear and bite it so and her determination was to see Picard again because I think she fell in love with him no you know, and you wow. know why it's really funny is that when they went to go transport when they're in the apartment and he kind of has an idea what she's going to do. Picard snuck over by her side and, and touched her like he was reaching for a side boob. <laughs> the look on his face was so funny. I mean, I mean, who knew those pointy eared hobgoblins could fall in love? I'm, I'm surprised know? that Picard didn't. When he jumped into her transport uh, smoke screen, I'm surprised he didn't get beamed right back. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. he looks so fucking guilty. I was in tears. The look on his face when she's going to transport, he had that guilty little boy look. <laughs> and he just <laughs> ran over there. It's like, I'm touching your boob. <laughs> and they were... And they were gone on the thing and she was mad, but I think a part of her was happy that he was there because yeah. like, like Rocky said, she could have sent him right back yeah. and, and she didn't. So I thought that was kind of neat and she was determined. And like you said, and every reality, every multi-dimension, every timeline, she dies, except this mm -hmm. one, she finally had the chance to come clean. I love that quote. Yeah. She dies in every timeline, but this is the only one that she met Renee. I was like, oh. <gasps> Oh my God. That was nice. And, and that's a combination of her, her mission was to make sure she was alive. Mm -hmm. And so she did the ultimate sacrifice to make sure she was alive. Yeah. So I thought that was, that was really kind of uh, neat. Adamson and, had a really bad day. Oh my mm -hmm. God. That made he me He had laugh. a bad day. He <laughs> fucked that place up. 
Mm-hmm. <laughs> he just not. But you notice he didn't mess up the real expensive curved monitors. <laughs> oh, those look pretty nice. And and the secret door with the drones hanging out in the background, those are fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Until somebody know, launches those out. And yeah, I thought they were Amazon delivery drones, but I was wrong. I'm surprised somebody just like, just throw a blanket on top of them. They can't, they're drones. They can't fly. They'll get caught in the propellers. But no, they just oh, whoosh, launched right out of his, out of his yeah. building. They had staggered to launch. <laughs> then he had to sit there and play a video game trying to destroy the uh, the other drones. Yeah, yeah. that was funny. <laughs> I was, Rios is like, oh my God, these analog controls. I'm like, dude, analog <laughs> controls is where it's at. It's so much yeah. better than digital. Yeah, it he is. was yeah. playing Donkey Kong trying to destroy the drones. Yes. I kept thinking that if Heather was there, she would have had them destroyed like way ahead of time. Thank you, Captain. I appreciate that. Yeah, because she's got the video game skills. So it's I think always that's nice awesome. to have a Captain behind your back. Well, well he was setting yes. up that trick shot, though. And I, mean, I didn't mean it like that. I did not mean it like that. Oh, what? <laughs> what did you do? I did not mean it like that. But it was it was kind of cool to see that. And I love the fact that, you know, she's sitting there in the library with a VR helmet on. <laughs> That's right like, now. With I'm, the candlestick and it's and yeah. <laughs> it's like I'm taking your shit. <laughs> He's mm-hmm. watching all his files and he's like, there's nothing you can do. And I kept thinking, just turn it off. Right. Just unplug I, it from the wall. Just kill yeah, the that's, what, that's, that's what I was like. To just cut the power to it. But I, at first I thought it was Q doing it until, until yeah, we saw so Cordy. Yeah. But it's, so it's funny I. that she was in the library because that's where all the homeless people tend to go. Yeah. Because you get the bathroom. They take, you know, a whore bath mm-hmm. and everything. The internet it, access. In, mm-hmm. Instead of being in the library with the candlestick, she was in the library with the computer. Yep. Oh. And she was sitting on the floor. Okay, the clue, the clue right. That was good. Yeah, that was nice. It was neat, but I like the way they dovetailed into regular Star Trek history. Because after he get pissed off, he goes into file cabinet, and you see he only has one file, Project Con. <laughs> right. Where's those other files that he decided to keep that one in paper? Right. Yeah. Well, it looks like it was a military thing that they handed him. So that's yeah. why he probably had it there because you can't hack paper. You got to physically get to it. So that's what I thought was kind of funny. Yeah, but he I, was, I appreciated that that reference to TOS. Yeah. Did yeah. they ever say who created Khan in the old movie? No. Okay. No, but they did in Enterprise. Oh. They led to it in Enterprise because he had the Chippendale dancers on Enterprise <laughs> when he, he came there and all of the <laughs> I missed that episode. People. You still haven't seen that yet. <laughs> I haven't seen that episode yet. That's why. <laughs> mm, wonder why. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. Well, I'm just thankful that at the very beginning of this episode, Rios decided to listen to Seven about the prophecy. And then, mm-hmm. of course, he had to mansplain it to an old white guy. So that way they fucking listen to him. Because Picard, when Seven said it, it's just a chick. So he's like, no, I'm not fucking listening to you. Go away. But when Rios says it, he's a guy. And Picard's like, oh, you got a really good point there. I'm like, oh, you motherfucker. I don't think that's really what happened. Oh, no, what do I you think, think when, what happened? I think when Seven initially told him, he was caught up in a moment of trying to figure out what to do next. And so he just like, it kind of went in one ear and out the other. It wasn't that he was like ignoring her or, you know, it, yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think that's what happened. I think mm-hmm. he had a moment though when Rios told him again, where he wasn't quite as frantic in the moment where he was able to hear what was being said. Yeah. I don't think he, I don't think he intended to dismiss. Well, I'll, seven. I'll, I'll tell you what, as a woman, it is so common to say something to a boss and then have it be dismissed and then have a guy coworker say the exact same fucking thing. And the boss is like, that's a great idea. I'm really glad I got you. I'm sorry. Did Heather say something? See, thank you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> So uh, that um, was a really good idea, though. You must admit. I'm sorry. I'm trying to mansplain. But <laughs> <laughs> so uh, what was the really good idea? I don't know. You're the one who gave the recap. Talk ourselves out of the one. I don't say. know. But seven said it first. Yeah. But what was kind of also cool in a way is that everything that happened basically had to happen. So we saw things progress behind the scenes that we never were privy to. Like, for example, the bullet holes, like the con project. And also at the end, would Rio stay behind 
he had to stay behind because it was the guy that he, the little boy that he had influence on that used the chemicals that came back at a bacteria from Europa to help save the world, basically get rid of the pollution and everything else. Yep. So everything that happened, happened the way that it was supposed it to It was supposed to happen. And mm. Q kind of gave a hint of that when Rio says time is a funny thing. And Q kind of looked at him with that bemused smile that he's <laughs> so great doing. He's he like, goes, no hey, shit. <laughs> yeah, indeed it is. <laughs> you know? And so I thought that was that whole scene over towards the end. Even, okay, okay, okay. I'm getting excited again. When he's mm. finally there with Whoopi and he's like, and she's telling him, you always been brilliant, but not really observant. <laughs> and I left the picture there and you see Rios, you know, leaned on the beach like a, you know, the most interesting man in the world commercial. Mm -hmm. He was leaning against a truck. The truck. I thought that was really friggin' cool. And he died like my friend's grandfather did fighting in a bar. Well, he, my friend's grandfather died in a whorehouse oh. like fighting over a woman. Same difference. Like that sort of thing. Yeah. Right. With the last breath being from the cigar, a cigar puff. <laughs> you know, it is a, he just went out the way he lived. I, I'm glad that he had a really good life. At least they wrote that as a really good life. And he had such a positive influence on that kid. And that was nice. They really wrapped the season up really well. All the storylines got a good tie up in a bow and, and the references into TOS were just like it's funny because I saw on Facebook people who I've seen being like I have Picard sex nah, 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 nah. they were like oh my god the season two finale was so good so good <laughs> I'm like finally, hmm. I don't finally know. I shut them up I, I um I really liked the beginning of the last episode because it solved all of the problems right away. But then I was like, oh, but then they hit you with all the emotional stuff and the, and the teases mm -hmm. into the future. So I'm kind of like, I, I think what happened with me is I was kind of sad at the end, but it was, you know, the emotional virtual hugs about, you know, it's not going to go forever. So you give you the virtual hug, you know, get in with that hug with Picard and Q, you know, it's kind of well, like, that, yeah. No, it's going to go hug. that way. But uh, yeah. I mean, it was cool. I, I'm, all, I'm all right with it. Yeah, but that real hug at the end where yeah. he goes up to Q. When Picard smiles at the end of that hug. Oh, my God. Yeah. And he hugs him. I saw an interview with Patrick Stewart. He says that moment he did actually cry. He said yeah. it was just such Aww. an emotional moment when he went and to go and he grabbed him. I hate to him. be a spoiler, but since we're doing two episodes, we actually need to get on to the second one because we've already been on this one for 25 you always minutes. Like, you always like to get on things. Okay. <laughs> real real Wait, quick on I, that. I got yes. I got one last thing before we move on. Why wasn't Girardi on the bridge of the starship when we saw Magic. Dr. Octopus going around? Because Magic. it's the same reason um, <laughs> that Rios wasn't there. The time mm. had to happen. So that's why she wasn't on there. You notice that nobody asked where the fuck she was. It's just, yeah. oh, who's Rios? You know, he's a guy and I like him. But okay. yeah. All right. So in order to make Patrick happy. Tying this one up in a bow, it was a really good emotional episode and it was a wonderful arc. And we saw Picard get a chance to get laid finally with Laris. So that was allegedly. Allegedly. So we'll see how well he does in season three opener. The next show is Star Trek Strange New Worlds season one, episode one, Strange New Worlds. Number one goes on a first contact mission and ends up missing Picard. Sorry. Pike oh. keeps having flashes of his death. <laughs> Admiral Robert April orders Pike to find Una to bring ask Spock to marry her. The shuttlecraft Stamets brings Pike to the Enterprise. Spock tells Pike every time he goes into space, it makes him miss Michael. The crew head for Kylie 279 to find the USS Archer. Spock tells Pike he knew when he came back from Borat that he was a changed man. Pike tells him he experienced his death nearly a decade in the future. They drop out of warp at Kylie 279 to find the Archer empty. La'an suggests that raising deflector shields just before they're hit with plasma torpedoes. Spock realizes they built a warp bomb and recommends Red Alarm, the pre-warp civilization with two factions at war. General Order 1 makes beaming down hmm, problematic. Let's go see the doc for some cosmetic changes. Dr. Mbenga and Nurse Chapel are going to play with their genome. Chapel is from the Stanford Morehouse Epigenetic Project. Three altered officers beam down to the surface to find Una. Spock, Pike, and La'an materialize in an alleyway in native attire, except Spock's wearing in shorts. The uprising is similar to the United States of America's two civil wars that's happening on the planet. La'an detects the warp signature. They incapacitate two scientists and have the Enterprise copy their attire before being beamed to the Enterprise for a nap. As Chapel gets a DNA sample from one of them, the other alien wakes up and runs out of sickbay. Chapel pursues. It's a Delta Scorpy 7 situation. Spike. Spike. <laughs> Sorry, that's Buffy. Uh... Pike, Spock, and La'an have to pass a retinal scan before getting into the building. 
Uhura befriends the alien in the turbo lift before Chapel sedates him and gets his DNA for a booster shot for Spock. Transporter Chief Kyle beams the booster into Spock's eye so he passes the scan. They find number one and two astrophysicists in a cell as they escort them out a group of aliens come out of the elevator just as Spock's alterations wear off. Everyone but Spock and Pike beam back to Enterprise. They go to see the leader. Pike apologizes to the leader and tells them of the destructive capacity of the warp bomb. The leader doesn't care as long as it ends the centuries-old conflict. Pike relays a proverb of elephants and grass. The leader says it's less useful than a big stick, and right now she has the big stick. As they escort the crew out, Pike tells the Enterprise to make herself known. Now who has the big stick? The two factions agree to a meeting. Not believing you're going to die is what gets you killed, La'an says, regarding her family being used by the Gorn as a hatchery and food. The saying gives Pike an idea, and he asks for a historical package to be prepared for transmission to the surface. He beams into the middle of the negotiations and explains that they are not so different from humans. He gives them a history lesson of how we nearly destroyed ourselves along with a picture show, our second civil war, then the eugenics war, and then finally World War III, which resulted in the death of 600,000 species and plants and 30% of the population. Pike tells them to go to war or join the Federation, and he reminds them of the power of possibility. Back at Starbase 1, April says it took a lot of pull not to get them thrown in jail for violating General Order 1, which now is going to become known as the Prime Directive. Pike and Lon talk about the Gorn, and he says to trust him, we work better together. George Samuel Kirk comes aboard, and his new post is in life sciences under Spock. Lieutenant Hammer beams aboard. As Pike orders Ortegas to take them out to Warp Factor 2, he gives the speech of their mission was to explore, to seek out new life and new civilizations, and to boldly go where no one has gone before. Bum, 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 bum. Ooh, I can't believe that they solved this episode by who has the bigger dick. Stick. My dick is bigger. Stick. 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 Sorry. 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 <laughs> I can't believe that's how they won the day. <laughs> Whoa. I like the way it played out, though. I mean, the the foreshadowing of including the, the scene from the day the earth stood still while they're having yeah. pancakes. I loved that. Well, what about the noose from January 6th? insurrection that they had in the video yeah. clip. That, I, I, that like, video clip. That was so powerful. You know, the, the, I'm, I'm disturbed by this because sci-fi and Star Trek has always been foretelling our future. You know, we have communicators that we have walking around our iPhones. We got, we've got, um, what else do we have? What's the other great invention we got? We got talking computers. Um, we got all this cool shit. Self-opening doors, antimatter. Yeah, all that wonderful shit that we've grown up watching Star Trek foretelling yeah. the future. I'm getting a little concerned now because they've also said, you know, when we had our next war when we had our next big event i'm worried that instead of being the scare tactic that this is what could happen if we keep going this direction instead it's going to become one of the oh you know remember that cool communicator you had yeah we also have this cool ass big ass nuclear explosion going i'm worried that that shit's gonna go down because so um, much of the future is feeling like we're in the wrong universe especially like when we saw the crazy ass universe in picard's alternate history oh, i'm huh. just it blows my mind just a little bit i'm not worried because we have the traveler so he'll keep that from happening well try oh we will save us all yes we are always one string pull away from total annihilation well, isn't that what they said yeah mm -hmm. especially with this stuff going on with, I mean, with, with what's with, going on with uh russia and russia. ukraine and yeah. you know it just takes one crazy person with the wrong big button to push it's i will the wrong yeah. big dick but as i it will were. tell you only stick, one stick, little big thing stick we 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 <laughs> have <laughs> Duff. Okay, so I thought it was kind of cool because Ensign Mount loves riding horses like William Shatner, and I thought it was nice that they folded in all the experience and stuff he had on Hell on Wheels and showed that he's in a rustic cabin. And um, but one point of that, that's a really nice Airbnb. Starfleet has an hmm. awesome Airbnb hmm. because you got to well, remember the captain of the starship is going to be gone for five years. You know, is this who who runs this place? Where'd this come from? Is this actually his place? Or I, I'm confused at who owns this the beautiful facility that he's living in right there and having I, pancakes. I guess a prerequisite for captains is they love horse riding, horseback well, riding. And I don't horse, horse riding? In, what? Yeah, well, that I got covered. In the future, is riding your horse like walking your dog? So technically he was like walking his horse? Yeah, it's possible. I think it's like that in Montana. But here's here's oh. a little trivia <laughs> question for you. Um, who remembers the name of the Admiral that landed and tell him he's got to go April. back to the store? Bob, Admiral Bob. April, do you Robert remember? April. Robert do you remember April. Robert April? What his his thing is in Star Trek lore? Uh, wasn't he white? 
No. That's not other his than thing. That. Jesus other Christ. Than Wasn't he animated? No, other than that. <laughs> Robert S. April was the very, very first captain oh, very of the first Enterprise. Captain of the Enterprise, yeah. yeah it's right. not even mentioned before on the show at all. Come on. <laughs> so he, well, maybe what, we have people that maybe I, joined I, us. I knew. So, I saw a lot of people bitching about a rage on Twitter that I couldn't see. But about him being white. Be, about being, yeah, about, about the color of the, the Admiral's skin. And I'm like, what is yeah, this? Yeah, the writer who wrote the help write the menagerie says fuck y'all uh, that's cool <laughs> i cheered yeah and and i've seen all this rage over twitter i'm like where is it coming from because i apparently blocked all the people that are pr- pr- or i don't see them yet i don't follow them because hey. i didn't see any of that shit see good because you did a good job blocking the haters there's just a lot of people them. out yeah. there they just it, want them to be all... so much better if you can just find those mm-hmm. weed them out with that block button it's a really right, cool feature right yeah. off the fact i was excited because they they first contact was in a planet full of white people <laughs> <laughs> they, had, they had people of different <laughs> colors and persuasions and ethnicity. I, I, I thought like that was the, good. Um, the very first scene, you open up and you see the police lights on the wall. I'm like, what am I looking at? Yeah. And then you realize it's first contact from the other point of view. I thought that yeah. was cool. And the line, first contract, contract, whoops. <laughs> First contact is just a dream until it isn't. And they said that in the yeah. opening dialogue. And then Una said it in her little report that 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 the Admiral brought in the play the soundbite from her. <laughs> from the other point of view, first contact is just a dream until it isn't. So shit goes well, wrong. I thought that was cool that we grew up thinking it's a dream until it happens. And that's awesome. And except for but, on the other side of things, it's, it's just a dream letting it happen. It's an awesome thing until shit, shit goes wrong. Then then you got to call up the enterprise. <laughs> well, here's a little trivia question for you. You know, the security officer, um, the one that was his number one. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah. When he he was really, she's related to Khan. She's related to Khan. Really? Yeah. Yeah. She's related to Khan. Khan Young Singh. She's like she's a sister related. or something, right? Yeah, well, huh. we don't know. We won't find out, I guess, because as the season progresses, they're going to dive more into her backstory. But that's uh, why I'm she's very afraid of her backstory because it included uh, breeding sacks from Gorn. Was that what it was? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was yeah. that was disturbing. Yeah, her family was used as dinner and and breeding sacks. Oh yeah. my! <laughs> Yikes! Yeah, that was a little disturbing. I like her character so far. Oh, I she, love her character. Yeah, so her and, character is really cool, and apparently, she's really, really on top of the defense. And uh, ever so rightly, if she tells you to go mm-hmm. to red alert and raise the shields, uh, don't even question it. Just do it. Uh, that's instinct. He relied on her instinct. He could have easily overruled her. It's like, oh, shut up. You don't know well, what the fuck you're talking about. It was about. cool seeing the conversation because Spock mm-hmm. was coming at it from a pure logic point of view, as Spock normally does. And normally we're used to seeing Spock come at things correctly from that from that angle. We're looking at a younger well, Spock with less experience because usually on Kirk's Enterprise, you'd see Spock, you know, nail it with those kinds of suggestions. But this one, no, no, it was the, the other voice of reason was on the other side, the other shoulder. We're also used to seeing Spock fully clothed, too. Oh, yeah. I, I, Spock, I didn't are you mind naked? that at all. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you didn't. <laughs> and, and you came out with a very interesting, uh, you, what'd you call him, Spike? Yes. Yeah, is, that that was, is that an equivalent to uh, a Spurk? Yes. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> Star, Strange New Worlds now has spiking as opposed to spurking. They Spur- got kinky but, fast. I was really surprised at how kinky they got so but fast. That was, but I, I, I liked it because it's dealt. And that's what it's supposed to have been. I like also how they established Pike for being able to understand and listen, because like you said, she came at it from an instinct point of view. And then once the instinct hit, Spock used logic that he thought was good. So he was able to listen to both of them and pick which he felt was a good thing. So I enjoyed that. That happens because he came across on the shuttlecraft Stamets. Yeah. And Stamets Stamets was really smart. (laughs) What's that got to do with anything? Uh, These names of the starships, you know, I'm just, I'm just, it's it's right. taking me I, I know it's a tribute but it's taking me just a, a microsecond out of the show when they do that when they say oh that was a shuttle Stamets I'm like wait a minute that sounds familiar oh I know what that is meanwhile the show's still going on I'm like oh you distracted me dang but you maybe we'll find out that it's a long line of Stamets and, and then I had the USS Archer I'm like well wait a minute no. that sounds familiar too I saw that in the Discovery show just well, recently I think what happened was when Lower Decks came out they realized how much people enjoyed the Easter eggs because Lower <laughs> Deck had all the Easter eggs and then after Lower Decks you see all the other episodes start adding all these Easter eggs in. Yeah, there's a legacy of Star Trek they can build upon. 
they were there before. We probably just didn't notice them. I'm sure the, when they when they call them out directly like that, it just it's kind of like, whoa, hang on, guys. <laughs> I I know for sure I didn't see Easter eggs on uh, Enterprise. They were not doing Easter. Well, then again, Enterprise was the first. You, you didn't finish the show. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> that's a good but point. Snap. But it was it was nice to see them fold in some humor, like in the original series, <laughs> like the whole the thing humor. with his with his ears wiggling in the elevator. And oh my god! Well, he beamed out. down without pants on. That was the classic. Yeah. But no, he has shorts. He didn't like the fact that he was then, wearing shorts. And then, and then the moment that he his, his, his ears let go, the big scream was just so out of place comically hilarious. That, that uh, was, I mean, God, he was in a lot of pain, but man, I was oh, yeah. not expecting all, that. That's much better. <laughs> it's like yeah, that was oh. funny. Well, the established it was a lot of a lot of um, it was going to be painful. And her again, you see that she's got some sort of genetic superiority because he popped her and he said, this is going to really hurt. And she was like, oh, yeah, it didn't. <laughs> <laughs> so and then Spock scream. She she's an interesting character. She's a very interesting character. Yeah, it made Spock scream. Yeah, it makes the Vulcan scream, but the Sungian uh, uh, singing and you know, Luan just is, like, is yeah. just like, eh, yeah, you go ahead. I don't need to be sedated. Well, I mean, who knew that we were we would get a transporter chief spooging in Spock's eye? That was yeah. Uh, oh my. Uh, yeah, he was not really what f- I was expecting. The no. reference for the eye thing going to be this time, but okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had another eye thing, and it was nice seeing Ohura, but. A younger Ohura who mm-hmm. is still full of excitement, oh, and they 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 and cast not, her perfectly because she does channel Ohura just real real well. Yeah. In a, yeah. in, a, in a look and a head turn and a touch of the earpiece. It's just, yeah. it's like, well, that's a hurrah. But you can tell she also managed to bring in the younger part of it because she's not the, like she was on Enterprise where you have the cool, calm professional. She allows the exuberance to come out and you can see, you know, she's new. Everything is new. So she's got that excitement twist. She's a cadet. Thank you. And I love the doctor they had there. Dr. Mbenga. In Benga, I think it's cool. And plus, if those of you that watch Dune, he was in Dune for a little bit until he got into us a moisture a moisture thing to, to no bring spoilers. his moisture back. I haven't yeah, seen but, that one yet. <laughs> yeah, but it was. Did he go in the decon chamber? No, um, I'll let Rocky see it. But it was <laughs> it was kind of neat to see all of that in that speech he gave towards the end. But he went there and he's like, come on, people, what the hell are you doing? They're using warp technology to kill each other. What the fuck? That's amazing, right? Yeah. And I, I love how um, he just beams in with the PowerPoint presentation and says, hey, here's what's going on, guys. And, well, and, this, and I, then, he, then he has to show his big stick. <laughs> well, I thought that was kind of funny because they're all sitting here. It's like, it's just two of them. Lock them up. Put them away forever. Just get <laughs> rid of them. Gonna, and he's like, Alexa, could you go ahead and show the ship? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then it, it, it appears right there, and they're like, "Oh, they didn't come in a little dinky thing." <laughs> What the hell is that? I mean, you, you got to impress somebody and put a starship in their sky. That'll make them think different. Yeah. Except the haters would be like, ah, that's fake. Oh, my God. Could you imagine that? Fake news. <laughs> Where's my rifle? I'll shoot it down. Oh, jeez. But it was it was nice to see that. It was kind of good to see him come. And we saw him come. Not in that way. No, the piss off. What was the thing? It wasn't Prime Directive yet. It was another name. General Order it. One. General Order One. Yeah, General Order Number One. Screw that thing. Yeah. <laughs> Take me to your leader. <laughs> yeah, and because he resolved the situation, they decided not to court martial him. Well, the thing was is they couldn't acknowledge the the conflict existed, so they couldn't acknowledge there was any. But there are a lot of classified things in this that that oh, makes yeah. me like. Well, you're not used to seeing Starfleet uh, have information that is classified. It's very unusual, and for yeah. Pike, it's every day. Yeah. Well, everything is brand new with him going out there, and I love the fact that they duplicated the speech in the beginning. Space, the final frontier. That's I thought that speech. was a nice touch. I like what I they thought- did with the theme too. The music. Yeah. Um, it, it maintained that original TOS theme, but then it built upon it, made it more marchy and more majestic sounding. I, I, I like that they did all that. And then they come out with the end of it with the little whistly theremin sound at the end. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you guys know what a theremin mm-hmm. is, but it's that very classic sci-fi sound that it's an instrument that you just play with your hands in the air. It, it like scans your hands like via radio or whatever and uh, knows where your hands are next to it. And it creates a frequency based off of positioning, frequency and volume. And 
and it's not an easy thing to play. Apparently, I haven't had a chance to get no, on myself. I, I, I've been told that, myself. but they're very when, cool, yeah. and uh, it has that one unique sound, a little whistly sound that you cannot mistake anywhere else for. So basically, it's one of those instruments you have to be really good at fingering. Today. Yeah, you have to get your ping- fingers in the right place, and you yeah. can't block the one hole in the front because then it's really bad. <laughs> Pike's speech about was, our was amazing. world wars. I mean, that, mm-hmm. I mean, I was in tears. Yeah. It, was, it was powerful. And I'm really glad what they did. They didn't let the fact go that he saw his own death and that would traumatize anyone. And I'm glad that they're bringing this up. Right. Yeah, I agree. Trauma, that's not something you shake. That's not something like the Mm-mm. next episode, you're fine and everything's good. And I'm glad that they're bringing back flashbacks and rumination. And that is very, it feels very authentic to what real trauma survivors have to go through. Yeah, I agree. He sees a reflection and it's not the one he's expecting. Um, Mm -mm. No. Well, they talked Uh, about that in the ready room where as in original TOS, you know, um, Kirk would have to watch Joan Collins die. And then the next episode, he'd have to be over it. But they were going to do... In this series, each episode would be an episodic episode, but the emotional character arcs were going to be serialized. The traumas stay with them. And I love how it brought right into the plot of this episode and of the other character's trauma with Luann going through her. Luann, pardon me. With Luann going through her uh, devastating. Luann's a housewife. (laughs) The the singing woman. Um, Yes. She's wonderful. And the, the, the thing that she saw in the other people's faces when they were dying was surprise because they couldn't imagine dying. I thought that was pretty striking. And when people are about to go head to head and set off the nuclear bombs or worse at each other, they can't imagine going out like that. They don't know what it's like. So she has that in common with Pike because he's kind of seen it happen too. something devastating happens and Mm -hmm. he's living with it, even though he hasn't experienced it yet. But knowing your future is like it's it's it, it weighs on them immensely yeah but and spot. uh and then he said the, uh, the power of possibility that was one that stuck that was a phrase that stuck for mm-hmm. me yeah that's um, what spock helped him understand that yeah and i mm-hmm. think that's going to help him rationalize that it may not be set in stone you don't know but um, a lot of people were traumatized in this episode for example the people that they abducted brought aboard mm-hmm. and then started <laughs> anally probing <laughs> that guy got up and ran for it i love that scene. that was hilarious and he ends up that in the was turbo a lift. Scene. i'm like why did they turn off the turbo lift the second he got yeah, out of the door but so um yeah funny. he gets in there and, and he's got a conversation with sports with uhura <laughs> i thought yeah. that was wonderful you see but i love the fact that uhura is so astute and so intelligent that she knew that this character was from the planet and immediately engaged him like she belonged on that planet too that they were actually Mm -hmm. back on the planet so when he gets awakened again and he's back down there he's going to have a lot to reconcile in his head was I really in this thing or was I a thing it's like well no because now because they've made themselves known to the planet so he's not going to have to try and reconcile that that was a cool thing too you see uh, that also ties into the future because they were showing all the education going on with their kids Oh, so yeah, drawing looking the at the, ship. Drawing yep. the chalkboard uh, full of starships and, mm-hmm. and anatomy points and this and that. Um, all of that was cool, but it also made me realize their children are, are the future and they're teaching their children. And that's that's part of knowing about the power of possibility. And I mean, Star Trek is woke. Yeah. I, OK, we won't deny it because education's important. Woke culture ass wagon. People are important and caring for each other is important. So, uh, it, it, yeah. Did you guys notice they mentioned Kirk, but it wasn't James T. Kirk. It was like a different Kirk. Sam Kirk. It was his father. His, no, it that wasn't was his, his father. father. It's his no, brother. Isn't it's it? his brother. It's his brother. Yeah. It's his I didn't brother. Know his father brother. was in the Kirk, Kirk universe. Kirk had a brother that died on that planet that Kirk's they used. father was George Kirk. Seriously? The, this the cadet's name is George Samuel Kirk. No, his name is Sam. It's not no, his it's father. George okay. Samuel Kirk. No, this it's is not exciting. His dad. So we're gonna well, have his brother. This, up. this is gonna be <laughs> awesome. No, seriously. Okay, it's his so brother. I want to hear corrections get emailed <laughs> no. in next week and no. <laughs> solve this right <laughs> once and for all. Uh, yeah. wait, wait. I'm gonna fix it. Uh, uh number one, look up who Kirk's brother's name is and the fact that he died on the on that planet where they went down there and they threw the, the jelly molds <laughs> on their back and Spock went blind. While number one is looking that information up in the ready room after the show they talk about what happens in the next episode and we see the andorian who is a blind engineer did you guys immediately get like the geordie laforge uh vibe from that no 
Um, oh. But I was interested in seeing the vibe that was happening because the, she realized that even though he's blind, he's quite capable of doing things. He's yeah, not. I thought he that cannot, was cool. If just because he's blind, he cannot see. I mean, he can no. see. He just right. can't see with like his Jordy. eyes. Yeah. He looks like he's going to be a fun character to watch. Oh, yeah. yeah. His, his everything. What'd you find, number one? Well, his brother is named Sam in quotes. Like I said. Quotes. But his father is George Samuel Kirk, which was the name of the lieutenant that I they know. brought on. No, it isn't. I mm-hmm. guarantee. It, I'm, I'm reading it on Screen Rant right here. It well, says they be, there's also oh, a Kirk. On, the Screen Rant is not a, is not uh, Memory Alpha. Yeah, check out Memory Alpha. See what they said about a. What I, the I name think of this the is going to require a, a cliffhanger, guys. I think we're going to need to find out next episode what the actual answer okay, is. If he gets the answer while we're doing the the goodbye one credits more, here, wait, I got yeah. one more one more <laughs> note about this show. So Patrick, keep looking at the very beginning uh, when he's not answering the phone. That felt very relatable, you know, having the phone go off and just like not answering it. And I couldn't help but have the song in my head from Cake. I don't know if you guys listen to Cake, but they have a song that's a no phone, no phone. I just want to be alone today. And I thought about that and I had to tell you guys. It's a relatable thing to happen. I mean, if you let the Admiral's call go to voicemail, he's eventually going to show up in a, in a shuttle pod and, and scare you with your horse. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. it's an inevitable. Somebody's going to have to answer that phone eventually. Usually it's not a bill collector. I, I don't understand what happens <laughs> to that. That was weird. Okay. Memory Alpha. George Samuel Sam Kirk was a human male Starfleet officer in the 23rd century. He was married to a Lorian and they had three sons, including Peter. He was a son of George and Winona Kirk and the brother of famed starship captain James T. Kirk. I, I expect okay. homage and apologies and, and all kinds of like, cool stuff to be sent to my quarters. So that was Kirk's brother. There's no, there's no apology because Kirk's dad is named George is George Kirk. Yes, so but that's, I, but you're, that you're doesn't mean that's that, his father. But I'm telling you, but that's his, his brother that's is his the brother. one we saw on this show, not his dad. Yeah. If Kirk's mm. going to take over. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, look at me. Look at me. I am the captain. <laughs> oh boy. Okay. So uh, what would you give the first Picard on a scale of one to 10? The first what now? Yeah, the we're going to wrap up episode. the show. You said the, the last Picard. Picard. I okay. mean, the last Picard. Gotcha. What give, would you give it, Heather? I'm giving that a uh, solid, I have to say 10. It was a solid 10. And how about this one, Strange New Worlds? I'm giving Strange New Worlds a uh, an 8. It was really good, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else they have to do. Okay. And how about you, number one? Tens, tens, tens across the board. Outstanding. And it's certified fresh on Rotten Tomatoes. Well, that's even better. And how about you there, uh, Chief? I'm emotionally tripped a little bit because I, I kind of want to give it a nine, but I think I'm an 8.5 on Picard. Um, okay. But I was really high on the on the first episodes, so I'm not let down. It's just ending differently than I was expected. And then I, they got me in the emotionals. And I'm... <sighs> Emotionals isn't going to necessarily get me a high score. It's it'll get me emotional. It won't necessarily get me a high score. On the other hand, Strange New Worlds, I'm a ten on that because I'm excited. I love the first swing, and it's very much Star Trek. I'm ready for more. Uh, for me, Picard, I would have to give it a, a, a nine five. I really like the way they dovetailed everything and made it a nice little bow. And I am excited to say that for Strange New Worlds, I have to give it a 10 as well. I think they hit all the marks, good pacing, good blend of humor as well as excitement. And I love the fact that they're addressing mental health as well. Um, not enough shows do that. So it was done really, really well. Remember to watch the show notes if you want to see any of the stuff we talked about for links for purchasing or seeing this, the cool things we talked about. Now, don't forget, next week, we are not doing Picard, so we're going to be dedicating the whole show to Strange New Worlds. So make sure you come back then. Thank you so much for listening to us and for being a witness to one of the extremely rare times that my number one was incorrect about something. Doesn't happen very, very, very often. So I'm going to enjoy this with a glass of rum and coke because he's usually extremely flawless so thanks everyone for listening and remember just don't have a great week but make it so and if you can support the show by going to patreon.com slash starfleet underground lots of perks to choose from and you might even like some of them starfleet underground beaming into a podcast feed near you Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at starfleetunderg 
and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.